Hello. Good evening. Uh, it's fantastic to see so many people here. So welcome to Jesus College. Uh, so, uh, well, let me just welcome you to Jesus College uh, more generally. So about 879 years ago, uh, a group of misplaced nuns uh, decided that a field outside the village of Cambridge would be an ideal place to find a place to uh, retreat and contemplate. So they founded a nunnery here, uh, and it lasted for 350 years before it sort of needed to be rescued uh, by the Bishop of Ely, who founded... Uh, out of the, the remains of that, this Ormail uh, College, which then has survived for another 450 years. Um, so uh, the college has always been interested I as a place for stimulating thinking uh, and deep reflection. Uh, so we have a long um, history of uh, illustrious alumni um, from Thomas Malthus uh, or uh, political people from uh, uh, Thomas Cranmer, for instance, or uh, Dominic Raab now. So <laughs> influence extends in many directions. Um, so more recently, uh, we have uh, grown the intellectual forum so that we uh, can sort of move from this idea of a nunnery with walls looking inwards to thinking more outwards and thinking about the deep uh, and, and long problems and interesting sides of our society. And a college is a fantastic place to, to do that. So uh, this brings me to the topic of today, which is a discussion around, well, a discussion with our fantastic guest, Ei Weiwei. Um, so I should just introduce him briefly to you. So I would say that Ei Weiwei, in some ways, is maybe uh, a creative stoic, is how I would maybe um, put it. So already uh, at the age of 10, he joined his father in the far northwest of China, uh, in a sort of re-education, so uh, sort of uh, in some ways prison camp, and survived all of that and eventually studied design uh, in New York. Um, and, and sort of it seems like got, got a bit tired of freedom, maybe if you read it that way. So he'll hopefully talk about some of these things. So went back to China and um, sort of became interested in many of the things going on in, in, in China. So having decided that, that the States wasn't the place, then China became an uncomfortable place because he became interested in after the, the 2008 earthquake in Sichuan, uh, where he was really uh, appalled by uh, the, the causes of a lot of the loss of life in the earthquake, and again turned that into uh, a creative endeavor. Uh, and eventually he became unpopular with the authorities sufficiently so that they um, incarcerated him for 11 weeks. And he turned that also eventually into some sort of creative endeavor. So I think it shows you that this is somebody who is always interested in taking experience and doing something um, with it. More recently, uh, he, he left China in 2015 and has been in a number of places around the world, but has sent, spent a considerable time in Cambridge, much to our benefit. So if you've seen various ex, of his exhibitions in Kettle's Yard uh, and other places around. Um, so we're going to start in a particular place. We'll talk for about half an hour in conversation. Uh, uh, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask questions online. You'll also be able to ask questions in the chat, and we'll try and get to people, but we'll, we'll see how we do. The, the, the reason for titling this, this conversation around the question of memorials is because actually Jesus College has had recently, over the last few years, to think rather deeply about this vexed question of memorials as we explore our past and where our resources have come from, and also how we have memorials of our own inside the, the college, and what do we do with those, and what is the meaning of memorials. Um, so that's, I think, the place that I'm going to start with, anyway. Um, so, so my first question is really, what do you see as the interaction between art, which is often used as something to memorialize, and this process of memorialization? How do you see that? Well, uh, I only can speak from my point of view. Um, first, as artist, um, all my works I do is about giving new definition uh, about language and about uh, to define something. So that means uh, you have to understand the old to make uh, something new. So if you don't understand, so where the new come from? So 
So it coexists what in the past and in our memory and in the, in the so-called tradition or or history. That is has to be very respectful. So it should not be judged by today's value. You know, it's it's just doesn't belong to today. So we should leave whatever exists. We should uh, leave as is because we we cannot really reinterpret it. You know what in the you know we always try to reinterpret it, but those only interpretation. You know is a, a temptation, and uh, but. Uh, Rather to just destroy the past or to erase the past, which poses a, a big danger. Because I see, I grew up in China. We had a, we still have a revolution, but we had a very long tradition. After 1949, the communist, and I think the big problem with them is the constantly trying to change the facts, what happened in the past, and reinterpret it with their political interests. So under that kind of uh, concept or, or behaving, basically human society become insane, become, you know, become uh, you cannot really answer who you are if you do not know what happened before. Or, you know, the story cannot be just be cut off or to be erased. So, come back to the art. Uh, uh, the action of art is about giving you definition, but to give you definition is based on our understanding of the past. Uh, I once said uh, all the memorials is is made to be destroyed, but that to be destroyed not rather to say physically to be erased or to be to make it uh, disappear, but rather to exist in contradiction to what we are doing and the challenges or new ideas. And we saw that can challenge all those new so-called new ideas is is nonsense. So I'm sorry, I made it maybe too long. Uh, no, very interesting. So I mean, this sounds like what you're saying is art is always in a conversation with past art. Um, actually, I I didn't pay much attention when I was growing up because. The, under Chairman Mao's idea, the whole old world should be destroyed. And uh, of course, they physically destroyed a lot of, uh, you know, old, anything, old objects. They think it only represents the, the old China or imperialism or federalism or, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. So, still today, are struggling. Uh, they couldn't find uh, uh, some kind of common values. If you destroy the past, you can never really find the common values because you destroy part of a humanity. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe an, an interesting place then to link into is also in, in you know, since the, the revolution in China, also there have been new memorials as the state tries to get people to think in, in different ways, but also have new memories. So do you see those as successful as memorials? Should we keep them and not destroy them, but react off them? Well, it depends on how do you, how do you, uh, if the new me me memorials reflect today's um, value or, or well only would be decided by the future generation. Because even those so-called new uh, memorials are not agreeable. Even the old uh, memorials, uh, uh, you know, it's not, uh, you know, we not agree about uh, the values it carries. But still it should uh, have a space of a coexistence. 
So. The, the danger I see, a little bit like maybe uh, Britain, is that we start to accrete more and more memorials or, or memories of the past, and we sort of, every street we go in, we, we can't help but see these in our face. So do we, do we have to somehow let them age? Is, is aging an important part of both art and memorials? Well, you ask a question really beyond uh, our decision, because, uh, you know, for generations we always uh, making things uh, blindly and uh, you know we're not uh, we cannot say all the decisions that we made are correct and of course uh, as human being uh, one of the big character of being human is you make mistakes and uh, also those mistakes have to be judged by um, you know people from a different uh, judgment or angle or you know point of view so so, so in, in your own, own own art maybe you can you can talk about it do you, do you like that process of aging of some of your art or my art yes the the, the pieces that you produce H how do you see them aging or do they just appear and disappear they disappear be before they appear I, I, you know, I don't, I don't really care that much about my act. It's just, um, you know, it's just uh, it may may reflect something, but uh, it's not so important anyway. So, 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 is it maybe the the what appears from your art is what then is transmitted to the people who are seeing it? That's the interaction that you're leaving behind in society. Well, <laughs> you made it more, more profound. I, I only cared when I think that would be uh, interesting to make something become something, you know, or I have a curiosity to see uh, how, how the process and how that will become. Then, of course, the process includes later you, if you're like fortunate like me, you still can show in the public, and of course people give all different kind of opinions. They would uh, like it or hate it. So, but that is not so important anymore. It's uh, it's really about how you really start want to make something. So, uh, you know. So, uh, and and process is often a very um, important important part of artwork. So then I'm just interested, so the process of creation, but then we also talked about this process of aging, but you don't want to take control of the process of aging, that just, it can be blown up it seems like, uh, for, for your interest, or like the vase dropped, the, the process of destruction is sometimes important? It's, 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 it's material, but it's also, uh, I would say, uh, psychological, or you know, it's, I would not say spiritual, but uh, rather what would exist in our mind and uh, what we can really uh, or destroy, or even before we destroy it, it disappears. So, so it's not uh, it's not very physical. So. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't know if you have views about memorials in society. Are the, are the best ones the ones that, that are there physically, but they somehow, l we go past them and we don't see them? What, what's a successful memorial for you, maybe? Successful memorial Which ones do you like? It's like uh, the sun, the moon, you know, the stars, and uh, the you know, mountains, the rivers. I think man-made things are very... Uh, I admire, you know, in the... Some ancient time, people have to collect knowledge and uh, ability, the skills, or to make something which is really admirable. Because we think it's admirable, it's really based, you know, the the ability of a human being, or hands, or or, or knowledge. But uh, in the nature, you know, we can never really create a leaf. Now we can create a leaf, or a drop of water or something, you know, but uh, I think humans still are too much exaggerated its ability. And uh, of course, that's why we have uh, uh, religions, you know, we, we think there's something beyond our 
or effort or beyond or even understanding. Maybe we'll come back to, to process a bit. So, so how, how, how do you explore new process? Is, is process very important in going in new directions for you? Uh, well, I will be very shy to talk to co uh, you know college like this because in scientific world, you know how the process started, and uh, you know some some questions or curiosities may exist uh, already for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. People still trying to uh, to to find out how developing. Artist, uh, it doesn't really work that way. They are more worked on like intuition or reflection or or sensitivity. So it's not it's not something can easy to be measured. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, we see a lot of art. It's too easy to be measured, and. Uh, <clears throat> So I wouldn't even call it as art. So. Yeah, I, I, I th the, the point about process is also, I think, interesting in science as well, that you have tools and your tools don't do enough for you and you explore developing tools and see where they get to. And I, I have some sense of that, certainly in some artist practice. So, um, but, but one of the interesting things about your art is that, you know, materials are quite important, it seems, and also sort of um, repurposed materials. And so is there something you find really interesting about changing uh, bicycles or uh, rebar? Or I think so. I think <coughs> I'm probably I'm the artist uh, and dealing with the most, the best uh, uh, um, type of materials, but uh, still it's very limited. It's, uh, it's really uh, certain materials can structure a new language. The one type can never be uh, uh, present or even successfully expressed with uh, you know, one material, but uh, with other material will be create a new possibility. So sometimes materials leading to a new language, and uh, of course you need a concept to 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 even to choose the materials. You, you're not using just anything, but uh, but also uh, the importance of a material uh, come out a long. Understanding, you know, you have, you have to some something stay with me for 20, 30 years. Like I made porcelain in nineteen seventies, I never liked it. I never really think uh, I like that material. But uh, but one day, I I think uh, to do something is absolutely the best to use that. And uh, yeah, the the meaning is the usage, right? I mean, you, you have to. Uh, when you use it right, the meaning comes out. And th this was the sunflower, the seeds, right? The porcelain sunflower seeds, is that right? And is it, I'm just wondering, if what, what's the, the thing that you really liked about the porcelain for that? Uh, well, it's, just, it's, uh, it's complicated because that time I was uh, in 2010. I was in Beijing. And uh, I already feel it's probably it's very difficult to make big things in Tate. You know, all those sculpture, uh, sculptors make huge, huge uh, uh, structure. I, at first, I don't think that's necessary. When we think something big is really our own illusion, you know, it's not uh, because we are too small or something. So, so I think, why don't I make something very small and, uh, you know, it's easy to uh, to transfer or to shape to anywhere. You know, it started with a very silly idea, so it made a very small sense. But it happened to take 100 million yeah. to cover <laughs> that uh, large, uh, large uh, fields. So, 
was that daunting then, the discovery that to actually fill the whole space you would have to make so many of them? And yeah, I made many mistakes. I made the decision to make it too small. So I have to, <laughs> you know, I have to labor in this 1,600 <laughs> ladies in one town for two years. So, so, so pumpkins would have been a, an easy, a pumpkin or a... <laughs> would have been yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Huge pumpkin. <laughs> But th there's something also wonderful about the tactility of it, the, the material itself, the, and the well, you sound. You mentioned the pumpkin, I never no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not planning. He stayed in Japan for a while, so... <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, I mean, actually, that's an interesting thing about Japan, is the aesthetic. So, so in Japan, you'll have a concrete building, but next to it, you'll have something rather delicate, and that, that sense of looking... Uh, in a space is very important in that culture, which is a little bit absent from our culture. I don't know about China so much. Um, so so d d how do you feel about the fabric? You're in a number of different countries at the moment. Are there particular things that you like about the culture and the way that they sort of see, see the world or, and then maybe the art that goes in it? I don't really... Of course, they all have their own characters, you know. Some can look at the glass of water for a half hour and some maybe never even look at it, just drink it, you know. So it's a different uh, way of uh, experiencing, uh, you know, it's, it's about sense of time and space, but uh, basically we are human beings, we are very different from cats or dogs, you know, so they, the cats, if you, you can never really understand the cats, so. <laughs> Yeah. You, you can be very knowledgeable, but it will be impossible to understand it. So, so sculptures for cats would be an interesting challenge. Um, cats is a sculpture. You don't have to have a <laughs> sculpture of cats. <laughs> have you ever been tempted to make um, dynamic sculptures, sculptures that move? That's dynamic. It's something that moves, active. Yeah, I'm, I'm my sculpture. I moves. Still, I moves. So. Maybe one day I will not move, then will be fixed, still life, so. And then you've been interested um, more recently in, in materials like Lego. So, so maybe you talk a little bit about what, what's, what's the interest for you about Lego? What does it symbolize? Uh, Lego, uh, 2014, I was still in self-detention. Uh, this, um, not a museum, but uh, called the Arkansas uh, Federal Jail in San Francisco, old federal jail. Uh, I have a possibility to do a show, so I dedicate to the show uh, the something to do with freedom, mm -hmm. because I was, I was very restrained. So, but uh, to do a huge show, I still have to do very small things. I always have to worry about how, how to make that happen. And the Lego gave me the possibility to make a clear design and any, anybody can make it. Mm -hmm. So I would not worry about uh, shaping those materials. Very expensive, also can be, can be stopped by, by authority. Mm. So the, the show is about 176 political prisoners in the, in the world, or, or prisoners of conscience. Mm -hmm. It's selected from uh, anywhere, but I don't know if there's one from England, but uh, three or four from the United States, like uh, Snowden or Chelsea uh, Manning or and, uh, and others. And uh, so I realized their images are very different. Some are very super clear. If you have uh, Mandela's uh, or Martin Luther King's uh, very sharp images because they were star. And uh, some images from uh, North Korea, the lady is very blur. And uh, many, many nations uh, could be from Iraq or Russia, could be a political prisoner, nobody even <coughs> know them, or they just have one blurry image. So uh, how do I handling this 776 or 75 
images. So I realized Lego gave me the possibility to make them equally clear and, mm. and also can manipulate it with their culture, you know, the color mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of, uh, you know, something can be related to, to their uh, bigger image. So that's how I made my first set of Lego. And I realized I can play with that very well. It can be, I can imply the political message and my understanding of art, the different kind of language. And uh, it can be more abstract or more, more realism. So yeah, that's how it comes. It's very interesting. So in some ways the Lego is it's bringing everything into it. It's leveling it in some ways. Oh, I hate to even mention that the name because the company refused to sell me Legos. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I still have to, to, you know, that's the problem. You use one, vo one yeah. vocabulary mm -hmm. that carries all the message. So they, they said, uh, we don't sell to people who use this plastic bricks to make a political statement. <laughs> I said, wow, that is very political. <laughs> <laughs> so I put on, I, I take off, you know, stupid, uh, you know, I like to take selfies. So I put on my Instagram, generates a lot of discussions. Uh, I think most newspapers in England, you know, they are especially like uh, guardians, they are really troublemakers. <laughs> they, they really, you know, they, everybody says, okay, this is a, uh, this art has been stopped to, to use in the Legos. So 20 museums I organized. Somehow the museums already gave my art shows. I said, do you want to set up a, a location people can donate my Legos to me? <laughs> and they all, you know, all the museums, they are very liberal leftist. You know, they love those things. So Good fight, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's strange, all the people support me, they're all leftists and the liberals. And I don't totally agree with them. <laughs> Still, they are su support me. And without them, I will be unknown. You know, the, the writers, they don't care, you know. So, talk about Legos, then they, they know they made a big, big mistake. They apologize, they change the policy. Which, uh, yeah, I so we can all make political statements with Lego now. I can make a even sexual statement. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't care, you know. <laughs> all they care is money. So it's very expensive to make a, a large Lego painting. I just designed in uh, design museum. That's 15 meters long. Uh, probably largest Lego piece. It costs a lot. <laughs> and they keep delaying, delaying me to give us Legos because every order you only can make a very small amount. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange policy. So. so so that maybe comes to another aspect, which is um, in some ways it seems like you've enjoyed sort of the provocations of the states. I, I do enjoy. Yeah, and, and is it because it, it helps creativity that there's something creativity there? Creativity is about a, a, a provocation. It's about mm. yeah, the whole creativity. You can use another words, you know. Yeah. So in some ways, do we need a state to tell us what to do or a company to tell us what to do so that we can react against it and find ways that... that that turn it into a, a, a ridiculous thing, and that, that is maybe where interesting art comes from? It's not so complicated, you just give me the finger to them. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's but is it in the right way? I mean, it's not just giving a finger, it's yeah, actually, it's, it's, it's yeah, turning it into yeah. something subtle. Oh, it depends how big your middle finger is. <laughs> yeah, it's really... First, you have to have the attitude, you know, you have to do anything, you have to have a, a basic, uh, you know, independent view, which means you're an individual, and uh, you only become an individual because you have that view. Mm. And uh, if you don't give that attitude or that view, you'll not become an individual yet. 
then who are you? You just carry some strange ideas. Doesn't matter how big your education can be, you still are just carry somebody's idea. So, yeah, I, I guess then the interesting thing is somehow we have to find that idea for ourselves. Yeah, we have to find who we are. It's, it's most easy to say but difficult game. Mm. So, so do you feel, wh where did that emerge on your journey or does it just still keep happening the whole way through life? We never really know where we are, we just find the next stage. Because, because in, the, in general people giving up that, uh, that uh, understanding you have to find yourself and uh, through that effort you become someone from very beginning because the education because, uh, you know, people think it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of sense to scare people. The so safety, you know, how do, how do you, how do you, how will you be judged by your family, your friends, your society, your status, you know. Those things can be very powerful. Hmm. I can destroy your most, uh, uh, interesting ideas. So, so do we need to suffer to make good art? No, I, th I, I think that's joy. Mm -hmm. You need to have real joy to make good art. It's not about suffer, but uh, we all suffer anyway. So, through the process. So, are you going to? Ah, uh, yes. Are no. You're going to look at the, the <laughs> watch <laughs> under there. <laughs> It reminds me that, that now we want to open it up to your questions. Uh, so we have a good amount of time for your questions. Now, as, as you hear, there are people around with roving mics. So I think what you need to do is you need to put your hand in the air so that I'll see you and I'll try and get round to different people. And also people up on the gallery, we won't forget you either as well. So questions from the audience. Yes, one back here. Hi, uh, my name is Miro. Uh, it's very interesting listening to you. Um, so my question is, if we are all born into this world, which is full of products, how can our art be something new and how can we make ourselves something new when everything around us, like you've said, is old? How do you find yourself among that? People always want to have a key to, to really open one lock. Yeah, they just want you to write something down yeah, and give it to them. Yeah, then <laughs> and uh, we all, uh, if I think it, we all exist as old and new at the same time. And the way it all depends on how you look at things. You know, the old things can be new, the new thing can be pretty old, so it really de depends on our, our way of interpretation. You know, I cannot make too specific, but that's my understanding. Mm. Uh, it connects to a question that we've had online, which is... Um, yeah, well, online. It has online as well. You can wave to the people online. Um, the camera. cameras are just over here. Uh, yeah, excellent. <laughs> So, I mean, for, for the online people, this is, you know, more pertinent. So, you know, we live in a more digital world now. Mm -hmm. So there's this question about, I is the future of art more like virtual art, or is the, the physical representation it, it really essential? Uh, well, it, it's, uh, it's so much talk about AI or, or, or virtual reality. And uh, I always feel I'm very much fascinated by reality rather than virtual reality. Uh, of course, it's very, it's very, can be very attractive, but at the end, who is going to, uh, who is going to uh, receive it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's how it does to humanity. After all, we are, we are all humans. I think the most interesting of being human is we, we, we are not trustable. We, are, we make mistakes. And, uh, and also, how can we trust the machine or, mm. or some kind of 
so-called the collective uh, wisdom. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, attractive, and uh, it's uh, it's it can be efficient, uh, can be can make huge unthinkable change for society, and also can be profitable. But uh, that uh, not not so much to do with art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take another question. Yes, there's one over here. I was a little bit interested in what you said about the greatest memorials being natural memorials. Yet a lot of your work responds to human, to human culture. And I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that. Um, you know, you mentioned the sun, the moon, the you know, the rocks and stuff. Like it, and but you know, it, it, but there is an, an idea of art uh, of thinking more outside of human culture about you know, trees and mushrooms and how they think. And, and I just kind of wondered if you could speak a little bit about that since your, your work in, or what I know about speaks a lot to human traditions. I, I, I speak about those natures, that means how our ignorance I, I, I about, you know, to understand the nature. And uh, if I really want to understand, I cannot even make a move because every step you look at since uh, even just the grass, you, you, I cannot really completely figure out about what a, a grass uh, is uh, being, why it's being like that. Even I take all those scientific uh, researches, still cannot answer why one leaves are different from another. You know, of course, like, you can get those kind of dry conclusions, but it doesn't really help that much. So. I, uh, my practice uh, in, in the so-called materialized practice, doesn't matter if it's a film or uh, a video or, uh, or even writing. Uh, I think writing is a little different because writing can really uh, bridge the, the, the real life and uh, the imagination. So I still think writing is the highest form of the of the art language. But uh, uh, other things, uh, it's uh, it's only symbolic. It's not so. You know, I I don't think that is so profound to make a sculpture or a painting. As a matter, you know, well, who did it? It's just uh, um, a piece of object, so I don't know if that answer you. <laughs> They're unanswerable. Um, other questions? There's one over here. Thank you. Um, a, at a certain size and scale, many of the ideas you're dealing with go into the realm of architecture. Um, and we use slightly different terms in architecture. For example, we'll say monument rather than memorial in many cases. And so what are your ideas on how architects and architecture in general um, are dealing with uh, many of the topics you're also dealing with? I, I, I think, uh, yes, I have been architects and uh, also I still build since. And uh, I think... Uh, yeah, I, I, if I say something, may, uh, may many people may really disagree or do not like it. I think architecture itself is uh, being, uh, I would say it's not so important. It's, it's just one object, you know, because there's a gravity and uh, you have to build something, you know, you can use different materials and you, you can, you try to be fancy or, or more disciplined, but still it's, uh, it's human's understanding of uh, who's going to use it, how he's going to use it. And then now architecture more about how we look at it, and the art doesn't even look, uh, look it just want to see how it would appear on the internet or a photograph. You know, I think uh, it lost its uh, meaning, you know, I, I, the architecture I really liked 
is the, those uh, anonymous uh, uh, poor people's building. They have, uh, they have very limited resource. If you really look at those, uh, you know, the buildings uh, could be Mexico or China or or some, uh, Africa. You know, they have uh, maybe they just a few a few a few branches, or they found uh, some kind of uh, material from a uh, um, advertising board, or you know, wasting materials, and uh, they build something which is. It's much more meaningful. The most architecture, which is glamorous in in London or in New York, which only shows uh, some kind of ego or or self uh, indulgent, wasting and uh, stupidity. Mm -hmm. So most architecture is is pretty bad, I should say. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm an architect with self-criticism, so. <laughs> did you enjoy the studios? I mean, you built several studios yourself. I, did you enjoy I, the, I living built, in the things that you built? I built studios. I really feel happy the, the authority destroyed it, several of them. <laughs> you know, I think only when they destroyed it, it become a work. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's nothing. Hope they can destroy the national stadium in Beijing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bigger it's challenge. Too heavy to to destroy it. So. Uh, yeah, that's probably a memorial that will live for a long time, or a monument. Yeah, a memorial of what? Uh, of mm. shame, maybe. You know, memorial can be really reinterpreted as something can be glamorous or can be a shame. So I always thought it since it's a bird's nest that we really need to have a bird that's big enough to actually lay an egg of the right size in it. Yeah. This this will be the right thing for it to happen in the future. Let's answer some of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's a question over here. Hi. Um, you suggested that you don't always agree with the liberals and the leftists. I was wondering who you do think you agree with, or if there's anyone you feel their particular way of seeing the world resonates with you, especially. I I only can tell I don't agree with whom, but to to see who I do agree with is very difficult to to to, even to say. You know, I. I don't even disagree. Uh, 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 agree with myself, so I'm disagree <laughs> with myself. So. Okay. Uh, now, are there any questions at the top here that anybody wants to ask? We give you an opportunity. Yeah, there's one over here. You mentioned being interested in ideas and language. Have you collaborated internationally, and how has this? affected your artwork? My collaborating internet. Well, I think that the question is about ideas and language, mm -hmm. and then has that led to sort of interactions with people in other countries? I guess maybe about language, something about, do you find language is interesting, that, that connection in different cultures? I think language is a very essential career of uh, culture. And uh, of course, I really Different region and the, and the culture background have uh, their own language, or you can call it uh, even like accent or habit. Certain material or certain way they would understand, certain gestures they would understand, mm -hmm. but uh, some they don't care. So of course, to working in internationally or very broad, you you have to. Uh, uh, for me, it's my motivation to work in very uh, ma various culture is to learn their language and uh, to try to imagine how they would uh, uh, to u to use that language mm -hmm. to express myself. So, uh, is there a country that you'd really like to go and do some work in that you haven't had the opportunity so far? Mm. Yeah, there are many. Uh, I haven't, you know, I, I haven't worked in 
India or mm. Russia or um, African nations, yeah. Mm. There's a lot of possibilities. Yes, <laughs> so, so a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. You have to keep going. I think there's a question here. I saw it in the middle. Is that right? Other questions? Okay, one over here. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you. I wanted to ask you something about your experience in Rome with opera, Puccini, Turandot, who was just, just one experience as far as you know, but I wanted to ask you how was that experience and if you do that again, if you would return to opera, to lyric opera again. Oh, I, I worked uh, uh, the opera Turandot in Rome. Yeah. I, I was asked by Roman opera and uh, actually before that I was asking ask, asked by the opera in um, how do you call this uh, royal opera in England they asked me to do opera I said why they said uh, you know this one may think it will be the feature to do it and they talked about uh, 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 opera um, Which, uh, which never really, uh, never really, it never really happened. You know, it's about uh, Beethoven's uh, only opera. And I said, why you think about me? They said that this opera is about a jail and a prison, and <laughs> that's very. Uh, <laughs> you now you can see how people look at me like. I'm still a prisoner at large or something. So then the Roman opera come to me. We want, we want you to work uh, opera. I said, uh, no, I'm not uh, interested in opera because it's uh, so hard to understand. Uh, but I asked uh, which opera they said uh, to run that. I said, uh, well, I may like to do it because uh, 30 years ago, in the 1980s, I was uh, uh, acted as an extra in that opera to try, try to make uh, $3 an hour, you know, running on stage. I don't care what they're singing. You know, it was Domingo and uh, even my tongue. It was very big, uh, uh, sensational opera. A metropolitan uh, opera house. Um, directed by Ziffer really. So I said, uh, well, this is a, like a big circle. You know, I was uh, extra. Now you ask me to direct in it. You know, I'm familiar with that music. I, I agree. It. But, uh, it's very difficult to work on as an uh, opera director uh, because certain things are fixed the music and uh, basically the Rose, you know the storyline. Everything's uh, fixed. Of course, you see many opera, modern opera directors. They make a minimalist opera. You know, they they would put uh, all operas in the same suit with some lighting or something. You know, and uh, I don't think that uh, that is so attractive. Make once is a statement. Make second time, you think that's lazy. So. I want to, but I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm worked in many political or social media or different um, materials. And uh, during that time, it's, it's such a struggle because I'm interested in the customer design or, or characters and, uh, and, uh, and the stage. And uh, so, I made the opera very complicated because right before the presentation on 2019, or they stopped it. You know, right before the dressing rehearsal, they said uh, pandemic. And uh, even that time, I made a joke. I said, uh, "Yes, uh, pandemic is like a uh, spaghetti, Chinese uh, uh, Chinese invented it." But the Italian really spread it over the world. 
And I don't know that joke made so much fuss in Italy. <laughs> they don't care about the pandemic. They talk about who really found the, the pasta. <laughs> so some Italian told me, I said, why? Why do they care about the pastas? They said the pasta and the mother is two words you can never really mess with the Italians. <coughs> so to make a story short, I stopped for a year, then they called me and said, wait, 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 we have to redo the opera. And the people have a short memory before they said that this guy should never come to Italy again. Now they still think I'm a genius to design an opera. And I made a fantastic opera. And uh, no opera can match uh, my opera because during that one, two years, the opera made the three, four films. One uh, is about the pandemic in Wuhan, and uh, another is about uh, Hong Kong's uh, uprising, you know, about uh, defending the freedom, and about the Rohingyas, refugees. So I have so many stories which can be naturally integrated in this, uh, you know, Torandat, Chinese prince, the Persian refugees, and the real love, and the, you know, also something, uh, you know, all those uh, brutalness. So I made a fantastic opera. No opera can match it, but the opera only present 12 times, and only very limited audience, because even you made a great work, people don't even know it, you know. So but I'm totally satisfied, and I'm not going to make another opera. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Interesting. Other questions? Yes, there's one up in the middle here. Thinking about your comments on destroying the bird's nest, I'm curious if you think creating art or memorials and having that be publicly accessible is more powerful or if the destruction of art and memorials is more powerful, such as, um, you know, graffitiing a Confederate statue or even censorship of books and art, which do you think is more powerful or impactful? Well, I don't mind. So, so this is the discussion about memorials. Are they more powerful? Okay. Yeah. Again, sorry. <laughs> yeah, is, it better to ma is it more powerful to make them or more powerful to destroy them? It depends. If everybody make it, think it's as valuable, it's very powerful to destroy it. And, uh, and if people really want to destroy it, it's powerful to make it, you know. So it's really, it's really if you talk about art, it's really trying to provide a new possibility. So that's how I think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So going against, it sounds like there's going against what the conventional wisdom of a society might be, is that right? Well, you can see that way, but uh, generally I don't believe in this kind of, you can call it a cancel culture, mm -hmm. or, you know, to destroy the, uh, what in the past, uh, I, I, I don't, I think that's a very cheap act, you know, it's not a, it's not right. I don't even think, uh, the, you know, the Metropolitan Museum, they, they change the, the painter's uh, national identity from one nation to another. It's, uh, it's uh, some kind of uh, elegant act. You know, I think that's pretty bad. But destruction has been important for you. I mean, again, I think of the vase, that, you know, a very yeah, early piece. It was interesting. It's a, it's a gesture. It's not a really mm. destruction. Yeah. You know, I, I make, a, if I don't destroy it, people doesn't even pay attention yeah. to so it. Yeah, so it's bringing it's attention to the object. It's not a, just bring attention to object. It's a give attention to a new uh, object. You know, it's not just leading to a purpose, but to destroy itself. The act is the purpose, but not the ideology. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to understand. Right? No, no, I think you're right. So, yeah, yeah. so you're saying that you're, you, you don't really like the ideological fervor there. You'd like to do something different than, than ideology. I will, I will fix the sense I destroyed after the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, thank you. There's, an, there's another one at the back here. And then get your questions ready. So uh, I guess in a few ways, my question is a little bit of a continuation on the last question. Uh, you stated the problems with memorials start to arise when somebody starts to rewrite history with their own narrative, um, for example, through the act of removing a monument. But is the original act of creating a monument not an act of narrative manipulation itself? Is this metabolic creation and destruction not an innate characteristic of both monuments and memorials, continually defining and redefining, contextualizing and recontextualizing themselves according to the entropy and values of the constantly changing world surrounding them? So what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> It's very erudite. No, it's a. He didn't uh, ask me, so. <laughs> I think he asked you. Um. <laughs> yeah, just answer once. Uh, I should answer once. Okay. I, I mean, it's, so it's a really interesting question, right? The creation of memorials. How would we create memorials now? What is a good memorial? Uh, I, I mean, I think. F I mean, it would be an interesting question to, to ask you. H have you ever created a monument? Well, uh, related. Have you ever created a monument that you were happy with? I never created a monument. Yeah. What would, what would you do if you were asked to create a monument to the pandemic, say? What would be a good monument that I, way? I made uh, one toilet paper, uh, you know, a marble toilet paper, but it's ah, yeah, yeah. It small. It's, you know, you can't call it a monument. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about marble. I mean, m the monuments that we talk about are often marble. Does marble have that significance for you, that it's somehow very no, permanent? No? no, it's just the stone. It's, it's ridiculous, but, uh, you know, but since... Romans or Greeks are using that, so it, it carries some kind of meaning. Mm. So that's why it's your, your, for me, the culture is a ready-made. Mm -hmm. And uh, you use it to, it's easier to be humorous with that. But uh, I don't care about the marble. I care about water. So why don't you drink some water, you know? I keep drinking. <laughs> You're doing all the talking, which is good. Hey, let's have a question over here, if that's OK. Um, I had a different question lined up, but I just got thinking about something. But you said the reason that you, or I don't you don't like. Yeah, oh, can sorry. You? Yeah, thank okay? you. That's perfect. Um, uh, I forgot my question. Um, you said the reason that you don't really like artificial intelligence is that it's it's not got a sense of humanity to it like it um i can't remember your exact words but um not like a sense of art to it um but i was wondering what you think of um <laughs> i'm sorry i forgot my question well but we can maybe talk around that yeah will, will artificial intelligence ever have humanity what? Would be artificial intelligence, AI, will it ever get to the stage that it has something like intelligence or it, we would be engaging artistically with it? Well, our judgment or experience only based on what already happened or we, we trying to picture it, you know, I, my imagination doesn't reach uh, that much. I, I think uh, uh, Artificial intelligence is being artificial. That means uh, it's not uh, it's not a human intelligence. Uh, it can be parallel, but uh, I cannot. Uh, I don't think I can replace uh, uh, human human intelligence. So, and then are you optimistic about the future or pessimistic? Because it's related. I have no feeling. You know, it's not. Uh, if we have future, we have future, you know, it's, you know, also our human feelings doesn't really, you talk about the human future or you talk about, what, what do you talk about? You know, I would say human future. I think the planet will carry on in some way, yeah, with or without us. So, <laughs> so yes, yeah, certainly we have too many uh, human beings and they start to killing each other and they start to make uh, these kind of silly arguments. And uh, and we can also double or triple the human being population. And uh, it will be some kind of result, right? I mean, you know, we don't have to 
be happy or unhappy about it. You know, so. Hmm. Now let's pick another question. Let's take one here actually for a second, in the middle here. Thank you. Um, when you left Germany, you said that uh, German society was closed or not open. Um, how did you decide to come to UK and how do you feel about society <laughs> here? <laughs> well, <coughs> I have to mention my son. My son said, never mention me in your talk. <laughs> and uh, I left Germany, my son, I, uh, the basic reason is I want him to study English. I think still English is easy to learn and uh, and all very close to Chinese uh, s kind of <coughs> language psychology, you know. S the way of talking English structure are, are very close to Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can say anything nonsense, but people will not criticize you that much. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, and my son warned me, don't say anything bad about Germany because I, or try, uh, about England because I have to study here for many years. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep it secret. I, I really take his uh, advice very seriously. <laughs> He's the person I care the most and uh, why I have to hurt him. So, so <laughs> no anti-German sentiment, I apologize. So. Uh, there's a question up here, uh, the one on this side here. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned about um, artificial intelligence not having a, a human element to it. Uh, I'm sure that you know, if you were to use one of these artificial intelligence tools to create art, it would look much better and be much more appealing than if I was to use it, or probably most people in the room. Is this something that you've uh, tried to do to, to see what is you know, dubbed artificial intelligence as, as a tool for you as an artist to produce new or, or different art? Or is this possibly a way for other types of artists, to, you know, maybe with, with different sort of insight, uh, to produce different types of art? C can you see this as, as a tool that might assist those making art? It's, uh, maybe I make an improper um, comparison. You say, OK, you, you work um, four days a week, and uh, you, you make certain money, but uh, your neighbor who, who rob a bank can make much more money than you. So, uh, which is true. And uh, um, I think artificial intel uh, intelligence uh, it's, uh, can make uh, uh, unbelievable images or, or effects or even stories or but whatever they make it, I should call it uh, that kills the, the, the same kind of art. It should not exist. So, so that, that means, yes, they can, they can paint better than most professors in, in universities. And that only means those professors should not exist. This means uh, that uh, the, the effects they're making are better art. Uh, that's my argument. So something dishonest about doing it that way, is that, that how you'd sort of say it's it? Honest is already very old words. I think mm. it's, uh, uh, yeah, but honest is uh, probably we only can borrow that word mm -hmm. uh, because it's not, I think, any meaningful to human being not talk about society, uh, to individuals is the effort, the emotion, the intention, and also the mistakes. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, so the joy and the sorrows happens at the same time. So if you ask a machine to do that, machine doesn't, doesn't really have those emotions. So, so what that to do with a human, I, 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 I mean, and how stupid we are, we are going to be convinced and trusted by a machine. Uh, you know, that, that is really need to be studied, so. Okay, we'll take one more up here. I think there was one there, yeah. 
Uh, hello. First of all, thank you so much. You're an absolute legend um, for talking. You're a legend. I, like, yeah. really, like, I think you're the monument. You're already a monument. <laughs> Sadly. Um, I drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, ah, okay. Um, yeah, thank you again. Um, yeah. Um, could you possibly tell us, like, maybe like a little bit more about the sunflowers and also what was like potentially the middle finger back to the tape modern? You were talking about your response to the Lego, and they closed your. The question is the the sunflowers, sunflowers and and were they a reaction? So was it something like uh, trying to to put the middle finger up to the Tate? Or no, no, no. Like, what was your response? Like, so obviously the Tate modern clo like stopped it due to health and safety. So out of curiosity, I was mainly asking like, what was the could you talk more about the sunflower seeds in general, like that whole project back in 2010 about yeah. like, your comrades and the dictator in China, but also like, out of interest was there like, what was your response to Tate Modern after they closed down the exhibition due to health and safety? Well, uh, I think sometimes you, 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 you make something people just capable interpreted or misinterpreted and I, I cannot even uh, be responsible to it but the fact is I I made it that's that's a, a very physical and uh, it's very clear that it might be a, some kind of you know it's against the intelligence to make so many sunflowers but there's something in my memory, it supports me to do that because I grew up in very poor area. Uh, you know, all the material life, uh, I would not say limited, basically is we have no any material life. So it's hard to even survive. So, but some for us it's, it's, uh, it's kind of friendly, you know, because in agriculture you always have that. And uh, there's not much meaning, but uh, the revolutionary think uh, we all sung for us and the Chairman Mao is the song and we, we face in the song, you know, made very romantic about it. So, but that vocabulary stays with me because it, if it stays with me for 20, 30 years, it's easily f for me to, to think to, to make something about it. No, and uh, but uh, the most meaningful thing come from much many years later. Uh, I think about uh, 2022 February after February 24th, the Russian invasion of a Russia uh, of a U Ukraine. This lady talked to Russian soldiers to say. Hey, put some sunflowers in your pocket, so next year it can grow up some sunflowers. You know, I did something have nothing to do with that, but still I think that's most beautiful, poetic uh, thing in relate to the same vocabulary. And your sunflowers... It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the... the And, and the sunflowers carry on circulating around the world. Your 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 piece is was it stored at the moment, and then it has exhibitions and tours around. Keep, people on Twitter keep telling me they have sunflower seeds, and uh, you know some of course I are sending out uh, like millions, and also some they took about two tons of sunflower seeds during the two days of opening in eight. <laughs> And uh, this article in New York Times to talk about the show, and the last sentence would be, I know to take some artworks is not uh, very, uh, not very nice, but if I'm there, I would take some. So you, you, you raise a kleptomaniac <laughs> tendency for everybody, they're desirable. Yeah, yeah. Keep telling me they have some sources. <laughs> There's a question here.
Air Gilbert, thank you very much for everything that you've said. Do you have, what is your wish for humans? Uh, my wish for, for human? I think now I should say stop the war and uh, destroy also nuclear bombs and uh, of course uh, I don't know where the pandemic come from, but scientifically we have to be very careful with uh, our research. And uh, and uh, but there's not much hope because people are very greedy and very selfish, and uh, they just want to make bigger profit. And uh, so I don't think there's much hope there. So. Okay. to stop to killing each other. This is very easy to understand, but and uh, but seems people not agree with that, and uh, nobody stops those nuclear and the military and you know development. That means we are we have a pretty bloody future, and, uh, and it come could come very soon. So. We try and avoid that. So, okay, we, we have five minutes more or so. So I think we'll try and take just a few more questions. One over here, one over here. And maybe if you just have short questions and we'll put them together and maybe you can then answer fairly maybe quickly. Maybe we have the same, same talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one at the back here, uh, just there. Uh, one over here. Is your art reaching the people that you want it to reach? Okay, that's one. Well, luckily, my question was quite related to that. Um, although it might be quite long to um, sentence that. And, um, <laughs> so thank you very much for your talk. And I was very inspired by all the questions before and how um, different museums um, basically structure your work. I'm very curious about your, how, basically how you would, you would narrate your work based on this kind of evolution of your experience. Um, because, like, um, as all the questions that appear, uh, this sort of difference between um, Western and Chinese ideology may cause this sort of misconception or, like, um, of your um, intention for your work. Okay. And also, um, yeah, yeah, basically. Let's, 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 let's so, so how how do you? <laughs> this is fine. So, so how do you reach people that you want to reach with your art? And also, do you feel a need to narrate something about the difference between West and Eastern appreciation of art? And has your work basically changed based on that difference? Thank you. Uh, I, I totally give up to, to, to try to, uh, to think there's someone I want to reach. You know, I... Uh, especially through art, but through language, I think uh, that's more possible. But uh, I wouldn't say my mom doesn't understand what I'm doing, and my son doesn't really care about what I'm doing. <laughs> so probably they are the person I should reach, you know, because it's more close to me. Mm -hmm. So. So I give up a very early time. I don't, I don't care that much. And do you feel the need, so, so you don't, uh, it sounds like make for a specific audience, but do you feel the need to narrate? I also don't like the, to, to talk about the West or the culture different mm. or East. Because I think, uh, you know, if I go to a restaurant, a uh, Chinese restaurant, I say, why you cook that way? It doesn't really like Chinese. That's, they think the West people like it. So, you know, it's very hard to really uh, to figure out who likes what and uh, for what reason, you know. So I want to make sure if I like it or it really makes sense to me. That also takes a lot of a challenge, so. So for yourself, it sounds like. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah you don't want to get lost. You, you have to always conscious about yourself. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I think we have to end now, but maybe I can just ask one, one final question, which is, um, if, you, if you were able to make a monument, what main monument would you make? I will make myself disappear. Okay.
an interest. We can't do that, in the, in, I'm afraid, here. For all those who wanted us to, to make it happen. But, okay. Well, I think we should uh, uh, thank Ai for really sharing so many different ideas together. So, so you have an opportunity to talk more if you want. He's going to be signing some books outside here, so, and you can carry on talking. So, and thank you so much for coming.